I hope you had a great weekend. Well, we've spoken about vitamin O, which is oxygen, the power of oxygen for trillions of cells in the human body, how it powers every single cell. It impacts our immunity, it impacts our health, it impacts our emotional wellness and everything else. That's vitamin O2. Today I want to talk about vitamin O, which is a hormone called oxytocin. Now you know I talk a lot about hormones because every single cell in the human body is constantly communicating with one another. And these are called hormones. Their job is to constantly communicate. Communicate, do an action, perform an action. Communicate, do something else in the human body. You have the right communication, you have great health. You have the wrong communication, you have problems ranging from inflammation to hair fall to the inability to lose weight to low immunity to every single thing in the human body is controlled by hormones. Now we have a hormone today that I want to talk about that is called oxytocin, which is why it's called vitamin O. It is so important. To some people it's known as the cuddle hormone. It is also called the love molecule. It is also called a bonding hormone. And you can see this when a newly born baby is put in the mother's arms, the bonding starts from the time that touch between the mother and the child happens. Oxytocin is flooded into the brains of the child and the mother and that initial bond happens. So we have to understand that oxytocin plays a huge role in our mental health, our brain health, when it comes to anxiety, when it comes to depression, when it comes to your nervous system and when it comes to your immunity. You see, we keep Googling different foods that can boost our immunity, improve our mood, increase happiness in our lives, reduce stress in our lives, but there is no magic food out there that does it because everything in the human body works in synergy. Now, yes, food will play a major role. So for example, the right food with the right emotion in the right environment that your body has will basically synergize to provide the right action in the human body. So when you look at immunity, you can Google top 10 foods for immunity. You'll see broccoli, you'll see garlic, you'll see moringa, you'll pro possibly see coconut oil and all of these things. But again, you can go on consuming these things, but they're not good. it's not going to improve your health if you don't have the right hormone communication in your body. So a little bit about oxytocin, like I said, it's called the cuddle hormone, it's the love hormone. People who fall in love experience high doses of oxytocin. It makes them behave differently. It makes them think differently. All of that is caused by a hormone called oxytocin. Now this is made in the hypothalamus of your brain and secreted by the pituitary gland. The more oxytocin you produce, the less inflammation you have in your body. You see, we have something called cytokines which produce inflammation. Every possible disease, right from diabetes to cancer to heart attacks, these are all inflammatory diseases because we have cytokines in our body. But just by raising oxytocin, the more oxytocin you have, you basically decrease the amount of cytokines in your body, which means you have the ability to decrease inflammation in your body by just stimulating oxytocin production in your system. Now, happy people also have stress, but happy people have a different attitude towards stress. They have lower cortisol levels. Everyone may, there may be a group of people right now, all of them have the same problem, but the difference is their attitude towards the problem. So happy, happy people, will have less stress towards a particular problem. They'll handle it in a particular way. They'll accept it more easily. They'll be able to let go of it more easily. And hence they maintain lower cortisol levels because your cortisol is your stress hormone. If your body is constantly flooded with cortisol, your oxytocin is constantly on the lower side, which means you have more inflammation and everything in your body is compromised, which is why we say chronic stress is the root cause of most diseases in the human body. Okay, so what else happens with oxytocin? It also activates serotonin. Serotonin is your mood lifter. We all have serotonin in our body, but if it is not activated and oxytocin activates it, and that's how our moods improve. That's how we feel good. So we have everything in the human body that we need. All we need to do is activate it. And we can activate it through what our body contains, something as simple as oxytocin. So if we're gonna do things to boost our oxytocin, we're automatically going to boost our serotonin, which means we are automatically going to feel good. The same thing with endorphins. Endorphins are again secreted by the pituitary gland. It is also called nature's morphine. You know, we all know that morphine is a painkiller. It's a deadly painkiller. But our brain, our pituitary gland produces endorphins, which works like morphine. Now runners will understand this when they get the runners high. Their bodies won't pain anymore, they won't feel any more stiffness, they will be able to run because they're fueled by endorphins, which gives them more strength, 
and which takes care of the pain and the discomfort that they're going through. It reduces pain and you'll see this in several case studies of gunshot victims who have not died because of the gunshot but they talk about the time the bullet enters their system they're on this high that makes them feel pain free for a while and they're actually literally literally comparing it to being on a drug like cocaine or heroin that's the power of endorphins so you see we were built with natural painkillers also that's the beauty and intelligence of the human body now how does endorphins work with dopamine dopamine helps us basically have a sense of pleasure we can have a lot of pleasurable things in our life, but it's useless if we don't have the right amount of dopamine to help us feel that pleasure. We know so many people who have everything from wealth to relationships to success and everything, but yet they feel empty in their heart, yet they feel sad, yet they feel lost, yet they feel depressed. This is because of your hormones. You have dopamine. If it is not activated, you cannot feel a sense of pleasure from the things that you have around you. So endorphins also stimulate dopamine. So now you can feel good. You have, you have sensations of pleasure and that does something else. Sensations of pleasure basically boosts nitric oxide. What does nitric oxide do in the body? It works as a vasodilator, which means it dilates your arteries and it rushes blood to all the other organs and cells in your body, which means it boosts immunity, it takes care of toxic waste and it takes care of inflammation. So you can see something as simple as one hormone, one hormone oxytocin can have innumerable effects on your body from depression to cancer to diabetes to anxiety to everything. So let's get straight into how do we stimulate oxytocin? Like I said, we're living in a world where we have so much, we have abundance, but yet sadness is on the rise, depression is on the rise, anger, fear, insecurity is on the rise, especially when we live in a world of abundance and we have so much around us. There are several natural things which are literally inexpensive and free that can stimulate your oxytocin. Number one, touch. Human touch can stimulate oxytocin. When you cuddle a little baby, you cuddle your child, you cuddle the person that you love, you snuggle with them. Human touch floods your brain with oxytocin and it makes you feel good and it helps you bond again. Hugs. The power of hugs when it's done in a respectful way with people's permission, it's unbelievable. The more you hug, the more you're generating oxytocin for yourself and for the person that you are hugging or you are touching. There's this beautiful study of how holding the hands, just holding the hands of someone you love, your child, your parents, your spouse, your lover, whatever it is, just holding hands can flood the brain with oxytocin and begin the process of everything I just took you through. And then we know love, it's called the love molecule. When there's true love, when there's love that makes you feel good, accepted, respectful love, clean love, it boosts, you know, it floods you with oxytocin. Again, go back to the time where you fell in love, you did all those crazy things out of being in love, that was all the oxytocin working for you, controlling your behavior, controlling your mood. Animals, having animals like pets, dogs, cats, where you can pet them, you can touch them, you can cuddle with them, that produces oxytocin as well. The habit of giving gifts, small little gifts to people, it doesn't have to cost money, it could be inexpensive, but surprising someone with a gift, there are a lot of people who just like giving because they like to see the reaction in the receiver's face. Now, of course, this is giving gifts without expectation. The moment you have expectation, there's no oxytocin, there's only greed. So the simple act of gifting, then exercise. We spoke about endorphins, having exercises in your life, doing exercises that you love will boost your oxytocin and your endorphins again. Good food, food that connects with you. That's why people who follow these fad diets that deprive them, that starve them, they just get unhappier, they have more cortisol and they really never lose weight. They lose two to three kilos, they have bigger bellies, they never lose stomach fat because you're feeling deprived. Good food should make you feel good. And when it's good and it makes you feel good, you will not overeat it. You will respect it and you eat it the right way. So having good food will also boost oxytocin in your brain. Engaging in activities that boost adrenaline. So for some people it's mountain climbing, for some people it's jumping out of a plane with a parachute, adventure sports. This generates oxytocin again, which is fantastic for you. Music, dance, singing, doing anything that makes you truly happy will generate oxytocin automatically, which is why I tell everyone, at least in 24 hours in your day, do one thing, one thing that you truly enjoy so that you can stimulate oxytocin and all the other processes in your body. Meditation, absolutely fantastic. Deep breathing, your yoga practice, all great oxytocin boosters again. 
your gut health, your gut is connected with your mind. When you look at people with depression and anxiety, you look at the gut first because your gut and your uh, your gut and your brain is connected with cranial nerves, which are constantly messaging. You have the right gut health, you have the right brain health. You have the wrong gut health, it affects your brain, your hormones, your emotions, your feelings, and everything else in the human body. Estrogen, when women hit menopause, their estrogen levels fall, which is why they tend to get more irritable. Young girls and women who also go through their period cycle will relate to this because there's a hormonal balance. So sometimes when we, imbalance, when we create an imbalance because of poor lifestyle, lack of sleep, too much of processed food, too much of alcohol, uh, too, ma too, ma too many substance abuses and all of that stuff or too much of stress. You have a hormonal imbalance, your estrogen goes down and then you have more emotional issues. So again, it comes, it comes back. Sometimes you can just balance your hormones by generating more oxytocin. Sleep, so important because we all know that when you have improper sleep, you wake up cranky, you wake up irritable and if you start off your day on that note, the rest of your day continues on that note and no amount of caffeine and sugar will fix that. It will fix it temporarily but not fix it at a root cause level. And then good friends and great relationships is fantastic for oxytocin. If you surround yourself with people that uplift you, appreciate you, acknowledge you, make you feel you know, a sense of belonging, you automatically have oxytocin. If you're in the wrong group, you're depleting yourself of oxytocin and you're creating more problems. And then we have laughter. The simple process of laughing every day or watching a funny video, or engaging in humorous conversations or having the people around you that can make you laugh boosts oxytocin. Now, yes, there are also vitamins and minerals that are connected. You need to have the right level of vitamin D for oxytocin, the right level of vitamin C, magnesium. So when you have a balanced diet, you're getting vitamin D, vitamin C, your magnesium from a balanced diet. Things like fenugreek seeds are great to help you with oxytocin. Things like chamomile tea as well. Chocolate, that's why most people love chocolate. In moderation is great for oxytocin again. And having coffee in moderation. In moderation, the right way is also great for stimulating oxytocin, which is why people love to have a conversation over a cup of coffee. Because coffee, oxytocin, endorphins, speaking to people that you like over a cup of coffee, that's why the whole saying goes together. So you see, when you live your life in moderation and you have everything in moderation, you automatically have everything in the human body to keep us healthy, to keep us happy, to prevent the onset of disease, everything that was the that's the beauty and intelligence of the human body that we have it's in us everyone has a healing power it only has to be tapped the right way and it's inexpensive it's practically free all it takes is vitamin d which is discipline and a little bit of vitamin e which is effort and a little bit of vitamin b which is belief that's all have a great day everyone think of ways to boost your oxytocin until next time eat smart move more sleep right and breathe deep. Since I ended with breathe deep, I should also add one more point. If you feel stressed right now and you're, com you're in a situation where you're completely stressed, by just breathing, will lower your cortisol, will increase your oxytocin, and in some way or the other, you will achieve at least some amount of peace in yourself. Your problem may still be there, but it's about what you can do to minimize your reaction to the problem and your attitude to the problem. Have a great day, everyone.